Okay, so this is a brief tutorial on how to export a 3D design out of Minecraft Education Edition so that you can 3D print it. With a little bit of work, this kind of file can work on all kinds of 3D printers, including fused deposition modeling, like the standard ones you might see in schools and libraries, as well as more advanced new resin printers, which can do very high detail for small detailed builds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go into the view library here and let's do a subject kit and go to history and culture. And there's a bunch of different worlds in here that could make for good exports. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, we'll do the city of Florence. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter into that world. Now this doesn't have to be a pre-made world. This can obviously be something that, that kids have made together. Uh, you should be in creative mode in the world. You will need to have an operator permission to use commands. Now this building in the back actually looks really good, this, this giant cathedral, and I was actually excited to, to do this one first, but the structure block, which is what we're gonna be using, has a size limit of 64 by 64 blocks in size. And so just looking at this, I can already tell, it's probably not gonna all fit. Uh, where something a little bit smaller like this fountain probably will fit. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna type a command to get my structure block. So I do give, and then I have to do my name, Ginger J structure underscore block. Okay, and that'll pop into my inventory right there. And as I place this down, uh, let's go like right there. Uh, you'll notice something. This is actually really, really friendly compared to command blocks in regular Minecraft. So if you try to use the clone command with a command block, you have to just memorize coordinates and it's really hard to see what's going on. Whereas this has got this wonderful bounding box showing you exactly what you're selecting. That's really friendly for kids and adults and everybody. Uh, this is not unlike like world edit CUI, like the, some of the more advanced stuff you can do in Java. They sort of appropriated the, that here. So I am gonna need to adjust it though. So it copies all the fountain that I want. And so if I go in here, I have some options. Now I could save it locally if I wanted to just copy that fountain and put it somewhere else, I could do that. Likewise, I could load something I had made in a previous uh, export. But in this case, I'm gonna do a 3D export and I have to adjust some things. So I've gotta make sure the size is correct. Now you'll notice, see this red line and this blue line and this green line, it gives me a hint of which dimension each of those things adjust. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 15 for my Y. And let's do, actually, well, yeah, that's probably about right. Um, we'll try to do 15 for the X and 15 for the Z. Now, it's got about the right size footprint, but it's not exactly in the right place, which is where this offset comes into place. So you can see the red line down there. If I do something like negative eight, it should be, oh, okay, not quite. Uh, let's try negative six. How are we doing there? Okay, that's a little better. So we've got most of it. Now I, I'm just a little bit, I've got that structure block included, which I don't actually think I want. So I'm gonna cut that out just a little. Oh, okay, never mind. 14, and we gotta do negative one. Uh, how about positive one? So you can see what I'm doing here very quickly is a lot of trial and error of just getting it right to exactly uh, select the part that I want. Now you'll notice something that is, I don't actually know how to fix and I think it has to do with block ID types and this version of Minecraft. So if I, I look at it from this angle, it looks like fine there, but then you'll notice it doesn't have texturing on that side. So it seems like some blocks might not be fully supported in their export. I don't know why cobblestone would not be. Uh, so I'll do an export. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plop this on my desktop. But this is a learning opportunity for most children. They just hit save and they don't actually identify it. And then they don't know what it is later and they can't find it later and they can't turn it into their teacher or anything like that. So if you're an adult, you probably know to put your name on your file. But uh, if, you're, if you're a teacher, tell little kids to say something like Fountain by Jeff Ginger. There we go. And now I'll know what exactly what it is. I could even go like full librarian and put a date on it if I wanted to. All right, so I save that to the desktop and it shows up and if your computer's like mine, it doesn't know what the heck that file is. You can't actually get that open right away. Paint 3D Microsoft Store. Let's try it that way. There we go. Okay, I had to give it a little bit more. And so you can hit this get button and download this software for free in Windows 10 or Windows 11 uh, and open up the file in that. Now I already have this installed. So I'm just gonna open it up right here. And if you already do too, you can just do that. And I should just be able to drag my file in and look around at it and you can kind of see here is my file. Now you'll notice what I was talking about earlier, it didn't quite get all the block types there, but uh, it does get the general facade of this 
file. Now, this GLB file, which is what it's spitting out, you can't actually feed that to most 3D printers. Most 3D printers have no idea what that is. So we need to convert this to a format that your average 3D printer understands. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Save As, and we'll do a 3D model, and I'm gonna put it right back on the desktop, same name, but I'm gonna do this file type of 3MF. And I might even actually just write 3MF on the end of it there so I know what file type it is. And when that comes out, you'll notice it's starting to be recognized by other 3D programs. So there are lots of ways you could fix this or repair it or prep it in another 3D program. The one I'm gonna do today is Mesh Mixer. And it's the same kind of idea where I can import and open up that file. And here we go, it is recognized in Mesh Mixer. Now it doesn't carry over all the texture data, that's okay, because the 3D printer won't know about any of that stuff anyway. And you'll notice it's on, on an odd angle. So it's possible that I would maybe need to flatten this thing out. So you do any adjustments you might wanna do here in a program like Mesh Mixer or NetFab. And then I can go to File and I can export it. And check this out, we can just do an OBJ or a STL. And so those are standard recognized 3D printer formats. So I'm gonna just do a STL here. Uh, Fountain by Jeff for 3D printing. Plop that on the desktop. And it, might, it looks like it was trying to catch something that it was fixing there. You may need to do some repair work depending on your, your export. But we now have a standard 3D printable file right there.